Episode 64 of This and That and What a Fuck Else. And this one I will be talking about the pestilence, the Donbass, and then I've got some disturbing information about the British Empire. Obviously I have to talk about the energy and the things happening in the EU. And Estonia also made it into this edition. And then there's a what a fuck that will make you smile. Yeah, it will make you smile. You just have to look carefully at the picture and let your mind go and you will smile. So the first topic, why would the Queensland government fine teachers for being unjabbed? It all comes back to grubby political donations. Now, this is a question that is asked a lot lately. And I saw some news this morning that I will include in the next skid mark that was really disturbing. It is becoming every day more clear that there was a lot of bullshitting going on. And as always, the truth is beginning to come out. My question is just this. What the hell is going to happen? To these perpetrators. A new Harvard John Hopkins study found that for every one pestilence hospitalization prevented, 18 to 98 actual serious adverse events have been caused. The poison and the poison mandates have been an enormous mistake and studies are proving it. You see, now you get this type of shit. But the damage is done. Millions of people have been spiked and they all now face a very uncertain future. And millions of small and medium businesses has been destroyed and most of them are gone forever. They're not going to come back. And I look at the insanity in China. We cannot for the life of understand what the actual fuck is going on there with their pestilence regime. I am more and more convinced that there's something else behind that shit in China. I have said it previously in a skid mark. I personally think it is a stealth sanction war that the Chinese are running there. They use the pestilence as a scapegoat, but their real aim is to destroy the American supply lines. And it's happening. What is something that I find quite interesting is I read a lot about people in America that's complaining about they can't get deliveries from China and they're waiting so long and all that shit. But here in South Africa, my neighbor, he brings things in from China on a regular basis. And yesterday he brought me a parcel of stuff that he got for me. And he ordered that about uh, less than three weeks ago. So maybe that supply interruptions is selective. And then we're in the Donbass. This is a tragic incident, but it is an indication of how stupid people can be. Australian mercenary Jet Denny was eliminated by the Russian armed forces in the Izium direction. Look at that, young fit man. But he made an ideological choice and paid the price. And then there's this from Mariupol. Some more photos of the new hospital in Mariupol. The center is designed for 60 places and was built from scratch by the MCC in a record time, 85 days. And I've seen other articles around that same thing where the people from Mariupol said they have never seen hospitals and clinics like this. And then there's this disturbing little bit, tidbit. Russia has announced it's transferred troops and equipment from the Kharkov region to Donbass over the last three days to reinforce operations in the Donetsk region. Well, Kiev says it has advanced in the northern parts of the region, but the Ukraine sees 4,000 killed in his offensive 
Christ, that is ugly. And then we get to the British Empire. The Empire is in our face this last few days with the death of the Queen and so forth. Now, I have said it many times, I don't have any special fondness of the British, specifically for what the fuck they've been doing here in my country and the way they have killed my ancestors. And then I get this, the Great Famine in India of 1876 to 78 is one of the most unacknowledged cases of British colonial genocide, with a death toll of at least 10 million. The famine covered an area of 670,000 square kilometers and affected 59 million people. Look at those people in that image there. Karl Marx called this the destruction of the self-sufficient village society of India for English free trade. Millions of acres traditionally used for domestic subsistence were seized to produce export crops like wheat and cotton, making Indians at risk of food shortage. And that is exactly what happened. And they ran into the food shortage and they died. The British claimed the famine was caused by intense drought that resulted in a crop failure. But as the bodies piled up in the last year of the famine, Lytton oversaw the export of a record 320,000 tons of wheat to European markets from under the noses of starving Indians. And that is exactly what happened there. They exported everything. But it's the same. Look how they are stealing Yemen's oil and gas. Look at it. Look how they are stealing the Syrian oil. And now I've also seen articles they are also stealing Syrian wheat. This is what the West does. The British Empire started that shit. And the Americans just took it over. I read a little article yesterday in which the guy said the Americans they found themselves there in their country. They got themselves independent from the British, but then they were without a rudder, basically. And they didn't know any other way but to continue on the way their previous colonial masters were used to traveling. And that is why the Americans started with their same fucking expansionism and they just didn't, never called it colonialism. And, but they are all over the world, everywhere, dominating, threatening, suffocating countries. Because they want those countries to do what they want them to do. And everything must happen to the advantage of America. And I am very glad that that death grip is being broken at this point in time. Finger by finger. The rest of the world is taking that American stranglehold off their throats. And it is a good thing. I listened to another uh, podcast this morning on a fairly popular Afrikaans channel. And the economist was talking. And I just had to shake my head. That guy is obviously not looking at the writing on the wall. He still believes that... The Western Empire is the be it all, everything that you need. He doesn't see that the Western Empire is busy crumbling. And he's got a lot of praises for the U.S. and all that cuck. The U.S. is slowly but surely losing their grip. And I don't think these economists watch the newspapers and things and channels like I do to what is happening in the rest of the world. But slowly but surely, the rest of the world is breaking away from this Western monopoly on world trade. With all the alternative financial instruments that uh, China, India and Russia is putting in place makes it possible for countries to function now and trade without being constrained by the West's most favorite weapon, sanctions. The fucking sanctions should be declared WMDs, because that is exactly what it is. And I see how the fuck they are 
going on with their sanctions and I spoke about it earlier now that they are where the America warns countries that buy from Russia that they will be hit by sanctions. I am glad to see the Western Empire collapse. And here's another one of the British Empire. Look at that map. Only 22 countries have never been invaded by Britain. But karma is a bitch. Britain is now being invaded by all those countries that they have invaded previously. And then we get to the energy. It's over for Europe. Prepare for the mother of all winters. No heat, no electricity, no food. Lots of protests, lots of repression, lots of violence. They have no one to blame but themselves. They tried to destroy Russia. It failed. And now Russia is hitting back hard. And that was Gonzalo Lira responding to a post that says Russia holds gas supplies to Europe until Western sanctions lifted. I cannot understand that the Europeans has walked with eyes wide open right into this ship pit. And then there's this. Ukraine is ready to provide more than 30 billion cubic meters of its gas storage facilities to Europe to form gas reserves. But the offer can become a trap. Ukraine lacks 5 billion cubic meters to get through winter themselves. So, fine for him to give them that storage space, but what the fuck are they going to put in those storage tanks? And then this one from Garland Nixon. EU winter of 2023-24. African and Middle Eastern immigrants returning home. Because it's warm and people are not eating each other. <laughs> Uh, and I think he may be right there. Look, I've said it previously. When uh, shit hits the fan in Europe, with the energy and food and all that cock, those immigrants there are going to tore those countries apart. And then there's this one. Options. What options? From where? And there's an image. To what extent can Africa plug the Russian gas cap? Natural gas production volume in Africa and Russia in 2021 in billion cubic meters. And then you look there at the total production of Africa, 257.5 against Russia, 701.7. The European Union is fucked. That Ursula von der Crazy is trying to convince the people that they will be able to manage. They are only going to manage what? manage how to freeze that I can do. And then there's this one. Could have been a what a fuck. Greenpeace urge to restart coal fired power plants in Germany. Restart coal fired power plants in Germany to reduce dependence on Putin's gas. Urge the expert of environmental organization Greenpeace on climate and energy. The expert said it is a better but necessary measure to restart the generation of electricity, all in order to reduce dependence on Russian gas. How stupid can people be? This is how stupid people And then we've got that Ursula von der Crazy. Von der Leyen, Europe's winter will be fine without Russian gas. Say, says she, standing there like a fucking dictator, because that is what she is. That is the head of the EC. That is the EC that is controlling the whole of the EU. And let this sink in again. I've said it previously and I'll keep on saying it. Those people are not elected. That is the EU Politburo. Look at it. Think about it. And you want to make comments about China. And then there was this cartoon. And you must now look at the picture and think about it. and Let it sink in. Ursula, how long has Schultz gone hunting? Good question, I would say. And then again, Ursula von der Crazy. Very glad to announce that as of today, Ukraine can export electricity to the EU market. It will provide an additional source of electricity for the EU and much needed revenues for Ukraine. And that was very short-lived. Because on Sunday night, the Russians wiped 52% of Ukraine's generation capacity. And then we get to this, and I've spoken about it in the live and so burning industry. 
EU burning wood despite green agenda. The European Union is set to vote whether to ban the harvest and burning of trees, while some energy crisis crippled Nordic and Central European countries oppose the proposal. That's while some EU countries have been burning wood pellets for decades, and a report suggests that burning timber is even more harmful for the atmosphere than burning fossil fuels. And look at that. That green deal is turning pitch black. And I, as a, that same podcast I mentioned earlier, that economist also made a fucking stupid statement about South Africa is well on the way of becoming energy independent with the restarting green projects. Fuck, doesn't that guy read wider? Look what happened in Germany. Billions and billions of euros spent. And all of that down the chutes, they burning wood. And then we get to Estonia, that little posty stamp country sitting there on the Baltics. Estonia is preparing for a guerrilla war. The Minister of Defense is preparing a bill that will give the army the authority to prepare armed resistance in territories that may be occupied. For this purpose, agent networks and special infrastructure will be created. For example, safe houses and hiding places for guerrilla warfare. Well, all I will say, good luck with that one. You better learn how to bend down and put your head between your knees, not to protect you from a bomb, but to kiss your own ass good. And then we're in the EU. Breaking. 40 CEOs of European metal producers have wrote an open letter to Ursula von der Leyen and the European Commission warning of an existential threat to the industry as power prices surge. Problem is, I saw also a message in late night, early this morning, of how many, basically the whole aluminium production system in Europe is shutting down. Now I'm just asking myself, if the aluminium smelters go down, those factories that are making car parts and household appliances and thousands of other things with aluminium, what's going to happen to them? Obviously they're also going to close down. And more jobs lost. What is the EU citizens going to live off? How is the fucking EU going to finance themselves with all their taxes dissipating like this? I would watch this space. Then there's this one. I'm telling you people that the situation in Europe is much worse than many understand. We are essentially on the brink of another banking crisis, a collapse of our industrial base and households, and thus on the brink of the collapse of our economies. But, as usual, nobody listens to people that actually talk sense. No, Ursula van der crazy, and then that girl in the... Uh, in uh, Germany, as Alex from the Doraim has baptized her, Annalena Dumbuck, I can't understand how the EU citizens allowed that shit to happen. We are also totally at the mercy of the authorities and we have very little knowledge what they have planned. Will they be able to stop the onset of the banking crisis yet again? I don't know, but I'm doubtful. But, and then there's a picture of the Great Reset, it's all part of the WEF plan. In any case, the speed of deterioration is massive now, and it's only a matter of time when markets catch up. I'm betting that we will still have a few weeks, months at max, before mayhem truly begins. Take precautionary measures. Stock. 1. Cash. 2. Food. 3. Water. 4. Wood, if you have a stove. 5. Other necessities. No harm will come from preparation if somehow, miraculously, we can avoid the onset of an outright economic collapse. You just have more cash, no meaningful interest in the banks, food, water. It is a tragedy. I can't believe that this is happening in 2022. And then we've got this one and it was done in Afrikaans and it was based on this drag show that was held at a school in which this fucking drag artist apparently did some ugly shit on the stage. This guy says, Ek donner die ding uit sy pantyhouse uit as ek hom by my kinders a school vang. Daarna is het ek in die hoof en ons gaan nie resepte uitreil nie. And in English it translates roughly to, 
I will knock this guy out of his pantyhose if he pitches up at my child's school. And after I'm done with him, I'm going to visit the uh, headmaster and we will definitely not be, not be exchanging recipes. <laughs> but the Afrikaans wording is better. And then we get to this one. And it's from Caitlyn Jenner and we all know that Caitlyn Jenner is a sex change, whatever, gender confused fucker made a post. It, it is so hard to find a straight man that is confident enough to compliment me on my looks. What the fuck? And then there was a response. Nice balls, nigga. <laughs> this could also have been a what the fuck. But now we get to the real what the fuck. But before we get there, just want to recap again. The European energy issue is ugly. The thing that bothers me is that I look and I listen this morning to that economist. It seems to me these guys are definitely not paying attention to what is actually happening to the West at this point. And it will be a surprise for them when the shit really hits the fan. Because from what I see, and you all know I have got my favorite topic is the global revolution. And that global revolution is picking up speed every day. Every day picking up more speed. Every day there's news of more deals done between the non-West countries. Every day news about more trade deals done that excludes dollars and e uh, euros. All local currencies and Russia is now also working on implementing cryptocurrency for payments and so forth. These guys better open their ears and their eyes and look. But I think just as America finds it difficult to adjust to the new world order that is speeding their way, the same way many of these commentators and economists cannot imagine a day where the West is not the big global force that it used to be. And then we get to that what a fuck. And look at that image. Evidence for global warming. 1720. 1900, 1950, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000. Look at that. It says a lot. And I have lived through that one from 1950 up to today. I saw it in front of my own eyes. And on that note, have a great day. And hit the like and hit the subscribe and hit the share. Yes, I need subscribers. You guys must really help me. I do truly need it. And I am going to work on my live streams. I'm doing the live streams. You should actually go to my uh, YouTube channel. And there is a section there. Uh, uh, what do they call it? But then you have a collection and a live feed. And you will see all my live feeds there. Have a great day.